everyone, and welcome back to Tokyo Tuesdays, the segment in which I head to the Tokyo Disney theme parks to sample and review every last eatery. For our 51st episode, we're heading off to the Halloween appropriate Sweetheart Cafe. Huh. Getting to Sweetheart Cafe is actually very simple. Starting in Tokyo Disneyland, head straight on into the World Bazaar. Keep going straight all the way through until you pop out the other side under the sky once again. Passing by ice cream cones on your right and the refreshment corner on your left, turn right. Very shortly after, you'll notice another cafe pop up ahead of you on your right. This is, of course, the Sweetheart Cafe. The Sweetheart Cafe, like many locations in the World Bazaar, favors a pseudo-late Victorian style. Interestingly, they've decorated the inside of the shop with what I can only describe as decorative gables, but inside. There are many beautiful decorative light fixtures and plenty of mirrors that make the space feel larger than it is. Many of the baked goods are displayed in white wicker baskets, and decorative window muntins make for a very classy feel. All of this theming is carried on into their outside seating area, where there are a good number of tables and chairs available. I am backlit, but that's okay because it's Halloween! Happy Halloween! This is going to be my Halloween episode. You can't see this, but my friend is with me. Uh, you are Anna. We grew up together. I feel weird not being here. Hello. <laughs> she, <laughs> she, does, she wasn't going to be on screen, but if you want to... Oh. There she is. Uh, she is visiting me uh, from both America and China. China. So we are having the uh, Halloween special food at the Sweetheart Cafe today. It's a nightmare before Christmas box. <laughs> Who doesn't love that? Uh, I'm eating whatever this is. Curry I don't even, bread. I'm eating the curry bread. She's getting the cinnamon roll, which works out very well because <laughs> I don't like cinnamon rolls. She also got the uh, cranberry cheesecake, cranberry cheesecake, and I got the grape jelly dessert, which is black like my soul. All right, so let's dig in. Curry bread. Mm. I'm gonna leave lip prints all over everything I eat. <laughs> So far, I haven't had anything other than just bun. Like, I haven't reached any curry. I almost like reached to. this, yeah. I'm about four bites in, though, and I haven't <laughs> gotten any sort of filling yet. Oh, that's good. That's what that looks like on the inside. The eyes are chocolate. Yay. That's a weird combination. It is. I'm not arguing it, though. <laughs> Mmm. That is definitely weird, but good. The filling, as far as curry goes, I wouldn't call this a curry. It reminds me more of like a bean burrito filling, honestly, which is weird. Yeah. It is a little bit spicy. The chocolate tempers that a lot. But yeah, more than anything, this is reminding me of like burritos. Okay. <laughs> but there's meat now, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Looks like I would I would imagine so. So the other thing I got was the grape jelly. It has grapes embedded in the top. I'm not sure what the white stuff is on the top, but we will find out. That's just cream. Okay. Cream and jelly and mint. Okay. Since I ate the sprig of mint. Oh, well. Yeah, this is very much as labeled on tin. Hmm? Mark that. It is grape jelly with whole grape slices in it. I just got like an entire chunk of fruit. Okay. <laughs> you also got your help. I got my cranberry and I got your grapes. Yes. I'm being healthy now. We had salads for lunch. Yes. Very healthy salads, followed by cake. Happens. <laughs> that is it for this week. We are going to continue parking it up, and I will see you at wherever it is that we head next. Bye. And finally, we're back. 
I say finally because this is actually the third time I've recorded an episode here. For some reason, every time I try and record here, the footage gets corrupted. This is the first time the footage has actually turned out, so I'm quite excited to see how it ends up doing. Let's find out. Service is a 2 out of 5. Now, to be fair, I have received perfectly adequate service here in the past. However, on this particular visit, the service was argumentative, for lack of a better word. You see, my friend Anna did not want the souvenir plate that came with her cake, but they were insisting that we either take the plate or pay extra to not take the plate, which is strange. Like, I'm used to the Japanese being very, very strict in their no food alterations policy, However, I've never had an issue before with not getting one of the souvenir dishes. Usually that's a standard option, so I'm not really sure why this was so difficult in this case. Uh, either way, as I said, the, arg the attitude was somewhat argumentative. Two out of five. Sorry. Atmosphere is a three out of five. This is what Ice Cream Cones Next Door is trying to be. The inclusion of the indoor gables, the decorative glass, the chandeliers, it all feels like the style it's trying to emulate instead of just a facade. Now, it doesn't tie into any particular movie, which is unfortunate, but it still feels really nice. I also really like the inclusion of the white wicker baskets, which is a very subtle touch, but definitely worth it. Three out of five. Price is a two out of Five. Now, to be fair, you can go here and get a very good deal if you're careful about what baked goods you choose. There are a lot of things on the menu here which are very affordable. However, we opted for the seasonal baked goods. And while they were good, they weren't tasty enough and certainly not filling enough to warrant the price. So, two out of five. The food is a 3 out of 5. I really, really liked my curry bread. The grape jelly, not so much. The sweet roll and the cake were both reported as being fine, which is honestly what you can expect from this location. Most of the breads and foods that I've tried here are fine. They're good, they're perfectly average, and what you would expect from a location like this. Three out of five. Overall, this gives the Sweetheart Cafe an average rating of 2.5 out of five, which, once again, I really want to round up, and once again, math won't let me. <laughs> Say lovey. With a 2.5 out of five, this ties the Sweetheart Cafe with six other eateries on the master list. I'm gonna go ahead and slot it in above all of them, earning 40th place on the master list. It's great selection of food available, combined with a really nice atmosphere means that there's honestly not really a lot of competition. Meanwhile, on the counter service lineup, it ties with the Nautilus Galley as well as the Gazebo, once again beating them both out to earn 27th place. Very nice. So, that's it for this week. Come back next week if you want to find out where I'll be then. Hint, we'll be crossing that horizon once again. If you have any comments or suggestions, please feel free to leave those down below. We'd love to hear from you. Give this video a big ol' thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you like what we do. We'd surely appreciate it. If social media is more your flavor, you can find us there. Links to that in the description box. I hope you have a happy Halloween, and I will see you next week for another Tokyo Tuesday.